This is Chris with Oregon Figs doing a video that really has nothing to do with figs. It is July 15th, 2022. So we have an enclosure around our vegetable garden because that's the only way you can keep the, the deer out. So when I put the enclosure in, I, I put this frost peach and I decided to put it inside the enclosure. And I was really questioning whether that was a good decision or not. And I've kept it maintained down low fairly well. And it is just turned out to be a great decision because it gives us a place to hang out and to be in the shade. This area gets sun all day long. I call it the hot box. And let's take a look at some peaches. So these peaches, yesterday I just dropped. They were so many that uh, I've still left a lot. <laughs> and I'll watch it as, it as it grows and see how it affects the branches. And uh, if you take a young tree and you don't drop peaches, you'll get weight on the branches that the branches just can't support. Here was a classic example, this, this crotch right here uh, that's split. And my son actually used a band clamp and clamped the thing together and it heal healed back together. So now I'm very careful. I've taken off a ton of top growth because it was getting to the point where we couldn't get the peaches and the, the honeybees of all things were coming in and they would form rows and they would just eat the peaches. And so you had to harvest early in the morning so you didn't get attacked by the bees. So I brought it down and this year we'll try to actually harvest <laughs> and not give them all to the bees, though we love the honeybees. Okay, so this little spot through here, that's my wife's little herb garden. It's got some really neat things. The pretty flowers you see in the background, those are uh, English runner beans. And we don't really get the beans or eat the beans. We like the flowers though. Nice things growing. This is a, a Rose of Sharon which is an unusual plant. And uh, it seems to love the shade provided by the peach tree. And my wife is an art teacher. We found these down in Southern California. One of our trips down there. So all these cute little touches, they're Ann. Most of the flowers are Ann. This is something that um, we first discovered these down in the Central Valley in California. We had a little market. We brought some home with us. and They're tomatillos and they make the most incredible salsa and they love the heat. These things are just cranking right now. Oh yay, we've got one showing the little lantern shape. So it turns into this really cute <coughs> lantern shape. Inside of that's a little ground, a round green tomatillo. But you can tell by the flowers this is going to be really productive. Okay, the garlic is ready to harvest when it's about half yellow. It's ready to harvest. This is ready to harvest. We missed a few scapes here. Those are the scapes. I see a few on there that we missed. This I had originally called Yostaberry. I was saying it wrong. It's Yosta Berry. I've been corrected by Derek, the person that did the graft. Snap peas are done. Just put some local varieties of strawberries in this year. With some onions around the edge to protect them and that seems to be working well. This is yellow squash. One of my favorites. I love to cut it into slices and um, 
just either steam it or boil it. Steaming it's the best. Steam it and then put it on a plate, throw a little bit of butter and salt and pepper on it. That's, that's like my thing. I absolutely love it. There's some zucchini coming in there. We eat a lot of zucchini. We both love zucchini. This is a Russian sage. It's a perennial and uh, has that really beautiful color that I really love. And it just gets covered with these purple flowers. And we notice bumblebees and honeybees just come in big time. Let's get over here. That's another type of squash. I think it's another zucchini if I'm not mistaken. Let's go look at those runner beans just quickly. This is why we like them so much. They'll just come up and they'll crawl up this fence and they'll be covered with these pink flowers. This is a five in one pair. Looks to me like the Flemish Beauty pair is the only one we're gonna get pairs from this year. This is a gummy berry I just put in. Tomatoes are just looking incredible. No issues with any kind of wilt or anything. It's so, it's so exposed and hot and dry here that tomatoes just love it. We're further behind than most places in the country because it's just cooler, right? And it takes longer for our hot weather crops to really start get established. But when they do get established, they do really well. And those are cucumbers. Uh, basil. Another cucumber. thought this is a, a beautiful thing when this happens the cabbage and the head forming is just they're just gorgeous and then some really nice dill happening behind it this is a little American chestnut that was gifted to me by my buddy Bry and Eugene and this one isn't affected by the blight so growing it out here away from all chestnuts because I don't think there are very many chestnuts out here it might become an American chestnut that really does well kind of a hedge of lettuce spinach in there some carrots in there some ravens in the distance playing around this is a grape that was uh, gifted to me by my buddy, Saad. This is a Tempranillo, Spanish variety. These are red seedless grapes. <laughs> and honestly, we don't even care about the crop because what they form is this really nice barrier from the sun and some privacy from neighbors. So we've kind of got those in as, yeah, we're growing grapes, but not really putting too much effort into it. I don't think those are onions. I think those might be shallots, but I'm not 100% sure. Got some peppers in there. And a few green beans. So that's about it for the vegetables. And these are those four blueberry plants that I got and put in this year. And, uh, did a better job of planting this year. I actually raised and created a berm and checked the pH and had to adjust it with a bunch of peat to get more acidity and uh, put them in. And on, on these top two plants, I did the thing, the same thing I do with my figs. I brought in um, some of that Frugal Pro mix and then I brought in some of the uh, composted steer manure and then topped it with pebble bark. And uh, these top two looked 
fine. They're looking great. The berries look really great. This one here, same thing. Big, nice berries. The next two down the row, I didn't get to them in time to do the steer manure and to raise them up more. And I came out here the other day and the blueberries were all drying up. We had a 96 degree day. And I thought, well, those are probably gone for the season. I said, decided yesterday I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do what's right. I'm gonna treat them like I did the other two. I'm gonna raise them up more and make it so that they're easier to water. So these, once again, I tried to water these with a hose and the water would just run off. Now you can just take the hose and put the hose on them and you can deep water them. But to my surprise, the berries that were all dried up and looked like they were going to be wasted are now plump looking in one day. So I caught it. I think I caught it at the right time. You can hear the, the geese in the background down at the lake, and you can hear the ravens. They visit frequently, and that's the sound they make. Haven't seen osprey today. Haven't seen the deer today. There, yesterday there were four big bucks that were hanging out down here. Okay, let's end this video on maybe a positive note. That's the first strawberry of the season from the plants we just put in. So that's exciting. Hey, thanks for coming, coming along on this little journey through my vegetable garden. Really, I should say my wife's vegetable garden because this is really her scene more than mine. I'm the fig guy. She's the more practical of the two of us. Thanks for checking things out with me. We'll see you on the next one.